Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, an overview and some benchmarks on this new video card from MSI. This is the MSI GeForce GTX 660. It is the Twin Frozer 3 Overclocked Edition and yes, I do have two of them and yes, that does mean I will be doing SLI benchmarks. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box. You do get a three-year warranty from MSI if you purchase this in the United States, Canada, or Mexico. This is the overclocked edition of the GTX 660, which means you have a GK106 GPU installed here. Uh, it's overclocked from the manufacturer's uh, base specs for the 660, and I'll tell you the, what that is in a minute. Uh, you get two gigabytes or 2048 megabytes of GDDR5 memory integrated. It's on a 192-bit bus, runs at 1502 megahertz or 6000 megahertz effective memory clock. This card is fully PCI Express Gen 3 compatible. Uh, it is also, of course, backwards compatible with PCI Express Gen 2 or 2.1. You get DirectX 11 support. Uh, some more detailed specs here on the back of the box, such as the memory capacity, uh, some of the stuff you get from NVIDIA, such as TXAA and FXAA, which are some anti-aliasing technologies they've introduced with the 600 series. Adaptive V-Sync is a pretty cool thing that uh, lets you uh, d uh, specialize in vertical sync or non-vertical -vert sync. It will turn it on and off uh, to help you get smooth gameplay, reduce tearing and stuttering. Uh, NVIDIA surround technology means that you can actually connect four displays to this single card. You can game on three of them. The fourth is a companion display. All these other stuff uh, and things right here, I did want to point out you need a 450 watt minimum power supply with a 12 volt current rating of 24 amps at minimum for the card and your uh, entire computer. And then here's some more details uh, on the inside of the flap. You get the MSI Afterburner software, which is very popular. Uh, video card overclocking and monitoring software. Uh, also, all the capacitors used in the build uh, is some awards here presented to MSI from a few uh, review sites. Also down here, some info about the Twin Frozer cooler. They're using propeller blade style fans, so that uh, gives you 20% more airflow than traditional design. Nickel plated copper base, high density heat sink. Uh, there's a thermal comparison of their Twin Frozer cooler versus the reference. Multiple heat pipe design and again, direct contact which just provides better heat dissipation. And uh, we can talk about this more once we get the card out of the box. I'll be honest with you guys, this is a faux unboxing. I've already actually had this card out and I've benchmarked it, which does mean I have a little bit of experience with it. And I can say that MSI's implementation of that cooler is very effective, kept the card very cool. In fact, about the hottest that I saw it get in all of my tests was about 58 degrees Celsius. Uh, of course, that's uh, subjective based on the amb ambient temperature, which is about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry to troll you guys with two different uh, thermal standards there, but you can do the calculations if you want. Uh, so a quick look at accessories in the box. Quick user's guide from MSI. If you've never installed a video card before, that could be helpful. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer uh, video series on Newegg TV. A uh, little specific guide here for the 660 Twin Frozer Edition. Uh, that's going to have some card features as well as a layout, as well as, again, quick installation if you're not familiar with that, and some tips on using the Afterburner software, which is also included right here. Uh, it's best to go to the NVIDIA website to download the latest drivers for this video card, because chances are there's updated ones that are newer than the ones that are printed on that CD. You get a power adapter here, two Molex plugs to a six-pin PCI Express connector, and that is the only power connector required for the card. Again, 450-watt power supply at minimum you will need to run the card and your system. I recommend going a little bit higher than that because it's always nice to have headroom. You also get an adapter here that's a simply DVI to a 15 pin D sub analog VGA connector. And if you have an older monitor, you can use this, but only with one of the two DVI outs on the card. I'll show you which one. Taking a closer look at the card, we're starting off with a measurement here so you can tell if it will fit in your case. It's about eight and three quarters inches long right there by where my thumb is. Uh, give yourself, I'd say about nine inches just to make sure you have enough room for installation and everything. But should fit in most modern day computer cases that have enough room for a discrete video card such as this. It is a two slot card, so bear that in mind, just as most video cards are these days. Two slots provides you a little bit more area for a higher thermal mass uh, heat sink, such as the aluminum fin array that's uh, in, under the Twin Frozen 3 cooling shroud. And uh, yeah, there's sort of a look at the card. I've had a chance to look at quite a few of the different 660s that have come out. This is definitely ranks up there with one of my favorites. Uh, I like the custom design. I like the uh, bit of detail work that's gone into it. The look in general is quite nice. It's got a brown PCB on the back. Flipping around to this side, it's got a gray and black uh, sort of shroud over the heat sink. But again, this is an open cooling design. 
That's going to give you, uh, in my experience, open cooling designs have uh, performed better thermally as far as the GPU is concerned. It does eject a bit more warm air into your case, so bear that in mind. You want to make sure you have good airflow moving through your case so that air gets moved out as it's generated by the video card. Uh, again, there's a two fans here on the cooling solution, and I should know offhand what size they are, but I'm going to measure them myself just to double check. I'm going to say 70 millimeters. No, 75. We'll say 75 millimeter fans. Right there, again, two of them, it's going to uh, push air down over that uh, heat fin array, the aluminum heat fins right there. Heat fins uh, have some direct contact with the base plate down there, and then they've also got some of these heat pipes. They're nickel plated, uh, it's a nice touch that will help prevent corrosion, uh, but those are extending from the GPU down there at the bottom out into the fin array. It's going to help move heat. There's another big fat one over here on the side that's extending a little bit, gives a little bit extra height to the card, as you can see it sticks out on the top. but also looks pretty nice because if you're looking at the card in most computer cases, that is the side that you will see. Now this is an overclocked edition of this video card. Uh, the GPU is the GK106. That is a different GPU than uh, the ones you've probably seen from the Kepler series so far. Those have been GK104 that are used in the 680 and 670 and 660 Ti. GK106 a bit, is a bit smaller. It's a 221 square millimeter die. It's located right beneath there in the bottom. Uh, it's manufactured on the 28 nanometer Kepler architecture. Uh, it has 960 CUDA cores, so you still get uh, plenty of CUDA cores if you're into the GPU compute stuff that's available from NVIDIA. And that equates to five SMX units. Those are the kind of the building blocks of the Kepler architecture. Uh, the 670, for example, had seven SMX units. Uh, the 680 is the top end one, and it has eight XM SMX units streaming multiprocessors. Uh, the 660 here also has 24 raster units. Uh, the GPU clock uh, from the stock version is 980, the base clock. Uh, on this overclock version, that's 1033, so they've bumped it up a little over, a little more than 50 megahertz. You also have a boost clock feature, which is a feature of the 600 series. Uh, boost clock on the reference goes up to 1033. On this card here, it goes up to 1098. Also, boost clocks uh, do tend to vary based on the GPU and the video card, so um, again, your mileage may vary. It's going to go at minimum up to 1,098 with this card. Uh, uh, our card here, this specific one, hit 1,137, so it gives you even a little bit more than what's specified on the box. And again, max temperature we saw with this was 58 degrees Celsius, which is quite chilly. I should mention we were testing this in, in an open test bed. Let me point out a couple more specs here before we get onto the benchmarks. Uh, down here at this end, you do have that six pin PCI Express power connector, so a single connector there. Make sure you've got that routed over from your power supply. And then uh, just sort of a closer look at the cooler there from the side. You can see they've actually put a bit of a sort of a black plate right here that's providing a little bit of extra support for the PCB. It actually, well, let me see, it doesn't extend and connect in this version like I saw with the 660 Ti, but they have provided a little bit more. There's another plate if you can see right under there. That's again just providing a little bit more heat dissipation on the power delivery area with your voltage regulators. Uh, your connector up here at the top is PCI Express. Uh, it's Gen 3, but physically the same as Gen 2, so again, will fit in the existing Gen 2 motherboards. And then finally, you do also have an SLI finger, which is down there at the bottom. Just a single finger, so you can uh, set up two-way SLI with the 660. Uh, if you do want to go for more SLI than that, then you're going to have to upgrade to the 660 Ti or something higher end than that. Let's go ahead and move on into our benchmarks, uh, just to give you guys a quick Overview of the test bed, uh, we're running a 3570K, that's an Ivy Bridge Core i5 processor from Intel. It's on a Z77 platform, uh, 8 gigs of DDR3 memory running at 2666. Uh, and then finally, um, the video card of course, installed there and uh, we're showing you numbers in uh, single as well as SLI. Oh, and now I understand what our cameraman over there is telling me about. I didn't talk about video outs yet. Let me talk about that before we go into the benchmarks. Okay, here's your video outs. Uh, you have two DVI dual link uh, video outs right here. Those will support resolutions up to 2560 by 1600 if you have a monitor that supports that. Top one here is digital only. The lower one is digital and analog. So if you're going to use that adapter, use it on the lower plug. You also have an HDMI out as well as a full size display port 1.2 out.
And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. We hope you have enjoyed. Once again, this has been the MSI GeForce GTX 660 Twin Frozer 3 Overclocked Edition. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you guys would like to see more tech videos as well as a full review on the 660 from me, you can check out our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.